All right, Jerome, how much more needs to be priced into the short end? And depending on your answer to that, is there now an opportunity here? Yeah, and I, and I think that's the main question here. We've obviously seen yields skyrocket higher, and given the uncertainty with regard to the progress that the Fed's going to make to normalize monetary policy, that process is going to continue. But I think what we've actually seen is the market extrapolate out a good deal of that hiking cycle of that normalization of monetary policy well and throughout this year and into next year. And so markets pricing in eight, nine hikes for 2022 and another four-ish hikes for 2023, that's fairly well priced given where we are in the market cycle right now, yep. given the hawkish sentiments that Jerome Powell has actually given us over the over the past week or two to suggest that there's a 50 basis point hike on the horizon, maybe a second one. But the real question is, what what is the evolution of that policy and how does it go from here? There's a couple of factors actually to, to embrace here and to really consider. Number one, we've had a 100 basis point hike in that two-year note over the past month alone. So where we sit here today is we've seen a lot of price depreciation, yields higher in a very very short order. That volatility should be expected as that process normalizes. But from here on out, unless there's a major recalibration of where we actually think the Fed is going to go and significantly overshoots a potential terminal rate well into the threes, we're probably somewhat fairly priced. And the logic is this. When you think about the total return of bonds, there's two components. One, there's capital appreciation, and then there's carry and income. The capital appreciation component we've been a witness of for basically three decades as the tailwind of secular rates moving lower has benefited many fixed income investors. But what we're really getting to is an era of more traditional fixed income, one where carry and income actually is quite attractive. And what we will see is that higher carry and income with a two-year note at about 2.3% is actually fairly attractive given the potential for rate hikes over the, over the horizon. And more importantly, provides actually some cushion that that carry outweighs yeah. any potential margin for moving lower in and price going forward. So it's actually a pretty interesting environment for fixed to come for investors to find some defensive posture in that front end of the yield curve. Yep. Yep. Jerome, where do you think the terminal rate is ultimately going to end up being, though? Brevin Howard, and they don't speak about this kind of thing very often, think rates should be between 4 and 6% now. Yeah, at, at PIMCO, we think that's probably a bit high from where we're going to end up in the terminal rate. And we might overshoot a bit, but we're going to think that that terminal rate is is is, is basically in the, in the realm of, of, of two and a half to three percent, um, ultimately. And there might be an overshoot. So you might see an overshoot and then come back down. Part of that uh, part of the equation, quite honestly, has to do with the formula and introduction of the balance sheet reductions coming forth. And that's a factor that actually provides some tightening to fi financial conditions that, frankly, the market has uh, pretty much overlooked. The broader market, I should say, has pretty much overlooked. So that's a factor that probably comes into consideration once that announcement is made and once the reductions to balance sheet are actually being felt, both in terms of tighter liquidity conditions, but also in terms of tighter financial conditions across risk markets. Okay, you Jerome, know, has done if I could just yeah. jump in there uh, on the balance sheet. I'm wondering what your assumptions about that are and how long it really does take to translate into financial conditions, considering in the two weeks since the Fed actually hiked rates, we've seen conditions getting easier. Yeah, and then that's exactly the point. The Powell has basically sung a lullaby to the markets and said that risk markets are basically, basically placid at this point in time. In fact, the financial conditions moving easier gave him the green light to suggest that they might move 50 basis points. Mm. But the suggestion is, is that while he has been be, being, suggesting that the balance sheet is in the background, the reality is it's probably going to become more in the spotlight as we get into the second half of 2022. Admittedly, they might start slow in terms of that balance sheet reduction and get to a point of $80 billion per month reduction, but it's going to have a profound effect of the cost of liquidity and, more importantly, the cost of transacting business and reallocating assets from one avenue to another avenue. And so there's going to actually be a fairly rational response to this. It might not necessarily be a rapid deceleration or rapid decline in the stock market or other risk assets, but there's going to be a, a changing cost of capital that this balance sheet is going to be part of that equation of that normalization process. So the evolution is you're going to move from a balance sheet of about $8 trillion to $5 trillion over time, but the sizable, sizable decreases every month will eventually be felt later on this year and well into 2023. And that's effectively what the policy makers want to do, is create some more normal process along the way. And in that process, they might actually rationalize that the balance sheet does have an effect on that tightening process and procedure. Jerome, what is the risk? How big is the tail that the Fed needs to do significantly more from here than the market is priced? 
Yeah, and, and that is the handoff you know, that we need to be thinking about. Um, quite frankly, what we think about is the Federal Reserve and other central banks are in the inflation fi fighting mode. Uh, they're trying to decrease, you know, fight inflation in the, in the traditional and non-traditional senses. But the question is, is when do they pivot to the more traditional role of supporting growth? Um, right now, jobs are actually seemingly pretty good. We're forecasting at PIMCO 550,000 jobs for, for tomorrow. That's above consensus, but does that continue over time? Does labor force participation come back? What are the effects on the, on the segments of the economy who are going to be dealing with a aspects of stressflation that are impacting their daily lives? These social aspects are actually what the Fed has highlighted in the past and might actually give perhaps pause, but at least become part of the, part of yep. the discussion points of future Fed policy. So that's a real impact that we need to be thinking about um, well into next year.